Imagine having all the money in the world. Now that you have all the money in the world, it doesn't matter how much this watch costs. I think that can make you enjoy this video more because you will see the watch not for what it costs, but for the quality and for what it means. This watch in front of you is one of the most desired watches in the world. It is a Patek Philippe Nautilus, but this is the bigger brother, the 5712. It is, we could say, the complicated brother of the classic three-handed Nautilus that everybody wants. The madness of this watch is that it ended up being worth more than a house or an apartment. That's why I ask you not to judge the watch by its price, but for what it is. When we talk about the price of a watch, there's times when we have to consider many factors of why there are so many zeros on a ticket. Maybe from the name we see on the dial, from the materials of the watch, from the movement, or even from the sentimental value. But where does the real value of a watch come from? There is something very curious, especially with hype watches, the stainless steel sports watches that they are valued much higher than the same models in gold. But isn't gold monetarily much more expensive than steel? So that tells us that materials have little to do with the true value of this watch. And I say the true value in quotation marks because everyone gives a different value to everything. But I believe that in this case, Patek understands its clients perfectly. They understand their users, and Patek understands that many times the monetary value is not equal to the sentimental value. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Patek's slogan is you never actually own a Patek, you merely look after it for the next generations. So just imagine being a salesperson and telling your customer, well, yes, you're going to pay me a lot of money, you're going to use this watch for just a few years. But in reality, this watch is made for your son or your grandson to enjoy. They understand that what we leave behind is much more important, but even what we leave forwards is what's important. And I'm talking about memories. I'm talking about lessons. I'm talking about love, hugs, especially when we talk about family. I'm talking about richness and wealth, but not in a monetary sense. I'm talking about how rich and millionaire I feel when I hug my son. And I hope he feels the same when I'm no longer here, but he wears my watches, the ones that I wore when I hugged him. Not this Patek, because this is one of my best friend's watch and he lent it to me for this review, but you get me. Another great part of the value of this watch comes from its manufacturer. The quality and finishing of this watch is incredible. And it's something that can be seen at a simple glance, just from the way the text is printed on the dial. But the most impressive thing comes when you turn this watch around. And you realize that all the movements that you have seen before fall short against Patek's perfection and craftsmanship. If you notice, in every corner, in every edge, we have a perfect bevel. That means that pieces don't end at an angle, but that angle is actually cut back and perfectly polished. We have every plate perfectly finished with the Cote de Genève and the Perlage. And when you move it slightly, it plays with the light in a spectacular way. You see blue reflections, green reflections, orange reflections and every millimeter is perfect. Then we have the 24 karat gold micro rotor, which is a rotor that works and it winds this watch perfect. And all of this as a whole is a witness to the manufacture of Patek. Now let's go back a bit to the micro rotor. It is there for a very important reason. 
which is to make the watch as thin and slim as possible. Usually automatic watches have a rotor that covers the entire machine, but in this case, no. And that has two advantages. One, it makes the watch slimmer, but two, it allows us to observe all of this crazy Patek craftsmanship. It allows us to appreciate the level of finishing and perfection that, in my opinion, is what makes this watch worth what it's worth. It's funny because watches that were once sports watches have now become dress watches. And I'm talking about this Patek, some APs, uh, some subs, and of course, the Jojo Le Coutre Reverso. These watches were obviously designed in stainless steel, and that seemed unthinkable at the time. But now they are the most used watches at weddings and social events because they have become jewelry. They are no longer watches to use in sports. One could even argue that watches are no longer meant to tell the time as a primary activity. These watches and this Patek especially have become so thin and slim and the bracelet has become so ergonomic that it seems like it's completely made to measure. This is undoubtedly the best bracelet in the industry. Few times have I felt a watch as comfortable as this one. And just as the cherry on top, I believe you know that there, are, there is a lot of hype around three brands that are the ones that increase in price. Rolex, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe. Now sometimes this price increase is crazy, it's unpayable, some prices are ridiculous. But if there was a brand for which I would pay the premium, it would definitely be Patek.